This is part two of my critique of Kyle Rittenhouse's interview on American Sunrise. Part one is linked in the description below. We will pick up where we left off, although I'm going to back it up a bit because there was a point I should have made in part one, but didn't. So, hello out there. I am trying to get through. With cold, blunt analysis, cradled in the warmth of reasoning, it's time for Johnny Walker Dread to straighten you out on a thing or two. Emanating all the way from exciting Las Vegas, Oklahoma, it's the Johnny Walker Dread Show. Before we begin, uh, let me remind you that I'm one of Kyle's fiercest defenders on social media, and my YouTube channel has over 400 videos on his plight. Kyle acted in self-defense that night. Uh, there's no doubt about that. However, I'm not a fan of his book, and neither is his family. Oh, this Monday night? December 4th at 10 p.m. Eastern Time, Neil Kernan and I will be interviewing Kyle's sister Faith on my YouTube channel about his book. It will also be hosted on Neil's V Radio channel as well. So mark it down. Here we go. Um, but you're not somebody who has tried to capitalize on this at all. Why did you then write this book? I was tired of seeing narratives out there that aren't true, both from the left, both from the right. I just wanted to put the story out there and the facts of what really happened. Mm -hmm. A lot of people think I have it easy or I had it easy, and that's just not true. Uh, the reader gets the impression that it was him against the world, but there were plenty of people out there devoted to telling the truth about what happened that night. You go on Twitter and say something negative about Kyle, and you'll get a ton of his supporters jumping in to defend him. Just search his name and you'll see who I'm talking about. So, for example, here's Patty, a real dumbass who comes in and talks about a murderous Kyle Rittenhouse. And what happens to her? Well, we have Shayla, also called Steeler's Gal, who jumps in and defends Kyle's honor. Joy comes in. Freddie, Squatchy, David Rauschenbach, P. Cameron. Immediately, they jump in to defend Kyle on Twitter. And here's Derek, another dumbass who issues the same tired sentiment. Oh, he was 17 wanting to cross state lines with an assault rifle to kill human rights protesters. And what happens? Well, I am Jimmy comes in, Joy, and Fail Ninja, who I'm not familiar with, by the way. Just Another Poster has also contributed a lot of pro-Kyle sentiment on Twitter. And Longy, Unknown Person, Voodoo Goblin. And, of course, self-defense for all. My God, I've never seen anybody just jump on somebody. If you say something negative about Kyle, she's all over you. Take a look. <laughs> wow. So she's dishing it out. I don't know how many hours she poured into this, but again, Kyle is not alone. He has a ton of defenders out there. There's even a group called Kyle's Angels who devote all their spare time firing back at his detractors. Here they are on my live stream talking about old man Rosenbaum's lawsuit. If you're interested, I'll link the video in the description below. Beyond that, you had people who devoted considerable time publishing videos supporting your claim of self-defense. Three of them, Orkinet, Neil Kernan, also called B-Radio, and Logical Checkmate even provided material to your defense team. But none of these grassroots defenders are ever mentioned in the book. And what about all these independent journalists who developed the evidence that helped exonerate you? You know, the ones that you supposedly set up a grant-making operation through this now-defunct website called the Media Accountability Project to repay them for their efforts? Uh, not a word. Not a word about them. The fact is that I grew up homeless. I grew up homeless when I was a young child. I was on government subsidized housing. Mm -hmm. I had a drug addict dad and I had a mom who was working 80 hour weeks trying mm -hmm. to put food on the table. Mm -hmm. It was not easy growing up. Yeah. Well, he says nice things about her here, but um, the book kind of suggests otherwise. Yeah, and, and do you think maybe part of your motivation in writing this is because you know that you're not the last person that's going to go through this sort of persecution? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. We see what's happening in New York and all these other left-leaning states. We see me? what's happening in me? Washington. 
It's just I'm hoping that one of the people can that happens to be a victim of the. Did you hear that? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? <laughs> they need a little bit of work on their production. These prosecute um these malicious prosecutions can read it and find a little bit of hope that they aren't alone and that this has happened to somebody before. Yeah, I have to say, you know, there was so much in this book that that resonated with me, <laughs> someone old enough to be your mother. Um, but there was also a lot in this book I didn't know about your story. It's a really compelling, page-turning type of a story. Um, what's your best hope for what this book might inspire? I'm hoping, I'm hoping it inspires people to change their mind in a way, to open up their eyes and realize, hey, maybe we were wrong about the story. Maybe we didn't get it right, and maybe they go back and fix it. Maybe they don't. I don't care if they do or don't. The narrative's are already out there. But I'm hoping that it changes somebody's mind, at least one person. Then if it changes one person's mind, the book would be successful to me. Oh, that's a tired cliche, and I'm kind of sick of hearing it. If this new law saves just one life, it will be worth it. No, that isn't true, but whatever. Well, it's already done that, so then it's already successful. I want to ask you, what are your future aspirations at this point? Have they changed at all? Because I think you're living in Texas, if I'm not mistaken. You can run for office really young in Texas. Nope. I'm just saying. <laughs> nope. I don't have an interest in running for public office. Um, never have, never will. Well, what do you see yourself doing at this point? Well, right now I work a 9 to 5, trying to get lawyers paid. Um, he works 9 to 5 for a lobbying company. And he spends half his time speaking at political rallies. But... Yeah, the kid has no political aspirations. In reality, perhaps he doesn't. I, I hope not. He has no real education, and he never grew up around those with sophisticated businesses or political careers. He'd be a juicy target for any land developers needing that extra vote to support plans for a new subdivision. He'd just wind up in jail and not understand why. Not to say that he's crooked, but he's naive, and being naive and in political power is a very dangerous thing. Um, civil lawsuits are expensive. Um, I'm just going to work. I'm trying to live out as normal of a life as possible. Mm -hmm. In my free time, I go to the dog park and spend it with Milo. That's all I'm really doing at the moment. In the he's right. Uh, yeah, he, he just wants to live this normal life, like you and me. For example, Yesterday, I walked with my wife to the store and called my kids, watched a football game, then decided I needed a slight change of pace. So I appeared on Piers Morgan's international television show. And this is the reception I got this morning after I had come back from lunch. Yeah, you know, everyday stuff. In the future, and once these civil lawsuits are over, hopefully I can put my head down for a little bit and go to college and get an education. Yeah, and then, do you know what you want to do after that? Do you have any idea? If you're interested in going to college, you need to enroll. I took a year off before going to Rose State College in Oklahoma, so it can be done, but it's harder. But prove me wrong. In fact, I issue this challenge to you. Get a college degree. Make me look like an ass. Show me up. Just do it. Yes. I jump around a bunch on what I want to do. Because you're how old? 20. Yeah, because so. you're 20 years old, and that's really normal. Those of us paying for your college, for our kids' college, sometimes get mad when they jump around. But that's normal when you're 20 years old to not know what you want to do. But right now, you'd like a normal life. I think that's a fair request. Yep. Yeah. Kyle Rittenhouse, we wish you all the best with your book. Tell people how they can get it. Okay, so the book is shipping at some point here real soon. Um, I have a series of short videos where I highlight some of the more minor problems with the book. Uh, the major problems we'll have to wait for once the book ships. Because I'm praying that he decides to not butcher his family in the final print. And I have told him directly what I found objectionable and why his family is upset. But he doesn't seem to listen. I also hope they fix the awful formatting of the book. I mean, get a load of this indentation. Kyle told me that this is how the book is supposed to look. Whoa. And yes, the book actually encapsulates nearly every sentence in its own paragraph. But whatever. I've done all I can do. It's on him to make the right decisions at this point. But I have no faith that he will. 
like my video and subscribe to my channel, especially if you're wanting to hear more about his book as I have a lot more coming.